Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. Now if you follow me over on Instagram, you're probably familiar with my Design Dilemma series. And in that series, you send photos of your home to me and I give you 60 seconds worth of advice. And I thought that I would take some of my favorite design dilemmas and talk about them more in depth in today's YouTube video because I only select spaces that have problems that are widely applicable. I firmly believe that everyone has interior design design mistakes, right? But they're also really, really easy to ameliorate. So you will probably see things in today's video that you see happening in your very own home. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you all of the tools and tricks to fix it. And I'm not gonna tell you to spend a million dollars like you sometimes see in these videos. So let's get started. So this is space number one. This person wrote into me and said, hey Kiva, this is my first apartment. What can I do to jazz up this space? So, so far I love the colors of the space. We have the green, we have the purple, we have the blue it's very nice and vibrant but there are a few tweaks that I would make so when it comes to rugs we all seem to struggle with what orientation to put our rug in now in this space this person has kind of pushed the sofa up against the wall as to not block the walkway and I think that that's very fair right because when we have entries into rooms we want to make sure that we can really easily navigate them with that being said in this case I would still want you to get a rug that could actually be rotated in the other direction Right now, the rug is kind of going long ways with that sofa, but we want it to be going in the same direction. Ideally, we always want our rug to extend further than your, our sofa by like 12 inches, 8 inches, but if you can't do that, I still think it's fine. We still want the rug and the sofa to be going in the same direction because when it is not like you have in this case, it kind of feels like the space is really small and the space may very well be small, but we want to do our best to kind of fool ourselves into thinking otherwise. So with that rug being the exact same size as that sofa it's just making the space look really narrow so we do want that rug to be a little bit larger than the sofa if we can make that happen because it'll make all the difference don't be afraid to let your rug actually extend a little bit into the walkway it's not ideal but it's definitely better to have your rug extend into the walkway than to make the space look narrow or ha having your sofa extend into the walkway those are two things we don't want to do but i think making that swap could really really improve this space now that sofa is great. I love that you have velvet and then you have that rug because that rug looks like it might be chenille or something like that. It looks like it's really nice and cozy. What I want you to do is to add some of those colors you have in your rug onto your sofa. Not to say that your space is devoid of color because it isn't, but we want to repeat colors and patterns and textures in our space because it just helps it be a little bit more cohesive. So whether you have a cream pillow that has blue in it or purple or you have an all purple pillow, it will really make a difference and try to vary the pillow shapes. So you seem like you already have square pillows that came with the sofa. Maybe consider a lumbar pillow or a round pillow. Just something that's really nice and comfortable and again is very different to look at. As for what we're doing on those walls, right now it's bare and that's totally okay. Above that sofa, I want you to put some artwork, but I want you to be careful not to get artwork that's the exact same size as the sofa because like the rug, it's going to make the space look really small. I think that you could do two prints or three prints, maybe 24 by 36, maybe 16 by 24 or 18 by 24. You can do a few prints there. I think it will really brighten up the space. You can carry those colors again upward or this could be your opportunity to do things that are predominantly white, predominantly cream, and kind of brighten up the wall because your wall does have a little bit of a yellow undertone. So adding some lighter colors up top will actually help the space feel a little bit larger. As we're moving upward, I also want you to consider changing out that light fixture. So when we're in rental properties, we normally say, oh, we can't change anything. That is not true. So with a light fixture like this, I probably say, let's switch that one out. I'm not quite sure what your design style is, but it looks like it might be bohemian meets eclectic. So maybe something that's made out of cocoa shells or maybe something that's wicker or maybe even a school cool Sputnik would look great in the space. So what I want you to do is just change out that light fixture, take the one that came with your apartment, put it in a bag, put it under your vanity or in a closet and store it away for the year or however long you're going to stay there and just put it back up when the time comes. This is not huge electrical work. I promise you this is something that you and your friends could figure out. Just be sure to turn off the electricity first and you will be good to go. Right now you don't have a coffee table or a side table and I think you have a few options in terms of a coffee table 
people, I definitely want you to get something with storage. I would probably encourage you to actually pick up the color you have in those legs because you have those really nice walnut wooden legs and get a walnut wooden coffee table. Make sure it has storage so that you can shove your things in there. I don't know the size of your apartment, but it looks like the living room is a bit small. So we wanna maximize storage in any way that we can. Now, if a coffee table isn't enough, you can also get a side table. And I want it to be a seaside table so that the bottom of it can actually extend underneath the sofa and it doesn't actually take up any of that precious floor space. And back to the coffee table, if possible, make it round or oblong or just kind of like a fun shape, maybe even like a live edge sort of wood. But I don't want you to do something that's rectangular or square because it's going to be a repeat of the shape of the sectional and of the rug. And I think it's just going to be too much of the same thing. And a round shape or something that's just different is a little bit easier to maneuver, especially when the space is a bit tighter. And if you like floor pillows and you want more seating, please add that as well. The Jungle Low collection from Target actually has a ton of really, really fun floor pillows that I love. So does Anthropology, and so does West Elm, I believe. So that's what I have to say about this living space. I think if you make those modifications, it's going to look truly fantastic. Now, one thing we didn't talk about is lighting. If your overhead lighting isn't enough, but you don't really know where to put floor lighting, that's okay. What you can actually do is once you put art up on the wall, you can actually add LED lights behind that artwork to kind of backlight it and provide mood amb ambience lighting like that. You can add a battery operated picture light or a standard picture light. I can't see the rest of the room, but I'm sure there's a better place for a floor lamp as well. But the options are really endless. Thank you so much to that lovely person for allowing us to explore their living room. The next design dilemma is actually their bedroom. Um, and I'm working with this space because again, there are some things that I think are really widely applicable. So let's dive right in. So you have beautiful, beautiful hardwood floors and I really want to let them shine, but there are a few things that I wanna tweak right off the bat. So we talked about curtains before, same thing here. These curtains are really low. They're really just sitting on the frame of the window and they're kind of getting lost. I want you to take those curtains as high as possible. You want to get the brass hardware because you do have that brass boob light there. I don't actually have a vendetta against boob lights like everyone else on the internet. I think if you're switching them out, switch them out. But if you don't want to, I think this looks fine, especially since it does have the brass detailing. As for the bed, I love a good canopy bed. I think that they are so traditional. They're so inviting. They just make you kind of want to jump in bed and give yourself a good cuddle or give someone else a good cuddle. But right now yours is pushed up against the wall. And some Something we commonly do is we push our furniture up against the wall to maximize space, but sometimes it actually makes our space feel smaller. So if you didn't have a canopy bed, I think I'd actually probably be okay with your bed being in the corner, but since the canopy bed takes up so much space vertically, I just don't think that's the right decision for you. So I want you to take the canopy bed and actually center it in the room. I see that you have an accent chair there, so move that accent chair to actually be right in the corner with that window and put a lamp behind it so that you have a really nice reading lamp if you're sitting there and lounging. As for the rugs on the floor, something people commonly do with kind of awkward spaces, you don't really know how to deal with a rug is you get two runners. Um, I think the two runners just kind of makes the, the bedroom look kind of like an entryway and I, I don't think that that is ever the goal. So if possible, I want you to get a larger rug for the entire bed to sit on top of, or it doesn't have to be the entire bed, but three quarters of the bed, that would be ideal. And I know you're probably saying, well, if I center the bed, where do I put like a side table or something like that? Well, what you can do is again, we'll put that accent chair on the right side near that window and we'll just have one side table. And that side table will be on the left side of the bed. You'll add a lamp and it will be okay. Your space doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. And if it's just you, you don't need two nightstands anyway. And last but not least, in terms of your bed, I just want you to make it a little bit fluffier. When we have a canopy bed, we don't always wanna put art behind the bed. So I think it's great that you haven't done that yet, but we wanna maybe double stuff our duvet or get something that's a little bit fluffier and lighter, maybe a linen, um, because right now you have that detailing on your bed, but it looks a little bit flat. So let's make it fluffier, layer more blankets. Let's also get some more color on the bed because you have all that vibrant color out in the living room. And then we can actually take some more drapes and drape them along the top of the canopy if we like that look, but you also don't have to drape it at all. I'm partial to the draping, but you can also leave it bare. That's okay as well. Now, if I saw more of this room, I'd have more information to share, but I think we're off to a really, really good start. Let's move to the next 
Fitbit's design dilemma. So for the third design dilemma of the day, we have this glorious, glorious living room. This space is fantastic. This person has chosen great furniture um, in terms of sizing, everything is good, but there is always improvements that can be made. So first of all, we have the tile flooring and tile flooring is really, really common in the South and in places that have uh, a lot of humidity and moisture. So that's great. But when we have tile, we also have a lot of echoing in the house and this space is massive. So I'm sure they probably struggle with echoes and plus the floors look a little bit boring because all we see is tile. So we definitely, definitely need to get some rugs down on this floor. So it seems like this person kind of likes a neutral color palette. So I had the Safavia rug in mind, which might be good, but you could also do just about anything. Just choose a rug that really reflects your design style. If you want the space to be a little bit more cozy, maybe think about a Moroccan rug for the living area. If you want it to be more formal, maybe the Safavia rug that I showed would work better for you. You can do just about anything in this space, but we need to get rugs down. And since we're talking about rugs, let's talk about rug size. So this space is massive, so you can't get a seven by 10 rug. We need a rug large enough for all of the furniture to sit on top of it. Generally, it doesn't have to be big enough for all of the furniture to sit on top of it, because, but because this place is an open concept and because um, it's so massive, we want all of the furniture for each section to sit entirely on the rug because I just truly believe that's what's going to look best. So we want that for the living room and we want that for the dining area. That being said, we do not want those rugs touching, right? We need to have space. They need to be divided somehow. In terms of furniture, in the living area, it kind of seems like everything in the same space, the sofas, the coffee table, the ottoman. So maybe we get an ottoman or two ottomans that are round or have like a fun shape to them. I'm kind of thinking of these like snaky ottomans from CB2. It might not be snake, but you're looking at them now. Just something a little bit more fun. I love that you do have the animal print though. So let's keep going with that. That being said, I do want you to add a little bit more furniture to the space. So maybe behind the sofa um, near the backyard, maybe we'll add a bench or something like that where we can add some decor or a sofa table. We just want to add more decor and more personality to the space. Same thing goes for above the fireplace. So please don't put a TV there. Please don't put a TV there. It is a glorious fireplace. If you need to put the TV there, you can, but you have so much open wall space. I say you could probably do a projector and get away with not having a formal television, but I I want you to put big bold art up there. Don't be afraid to go bold with the artwork. When you have a space like this, you can have rainbow artwork if you want. You can have bright red, bright green, do whatever you want, but please get artwork that really speaks to you and make sure that it is massive. To make the dining area more robust, you have a few options. One, we wanna get a rug down. Two, um, we might wanna get larger dining chairs. So if it's not in the budget to get brand new dining chairs, keep the ones you have and add larger ones on, at the heads. It's totally okay to have different chairs at the heads of your table as opposed to the ones on your side. At the heads, you want something with a big back, maybe a wing back, something that's a little bit more traditional and makes a huge statement. You could repeat an animal pattern. It could just be cream. You can do whatever you want, but we want something that's going to anchor us more in the space and really, really pack a punch. Your space right now, all of the furniture is really low profile and I love that. That's contemporary, that's modern. But because you have super tall ceilings, we have to have something that draws our eye upwards. So we might wanna consider something like that. Also, when it comes to that dining table, we wanna get more decor on the table. If it's the holiday time, maybe some garland or whatever it is really speaks to your religion or how you like to celebrate, but we want something that will occupy more of the table. Maybe a very long candelabra that kind of is an ode to your chandeliers you have up above, but we want something that takes up more space and doesn't just sit um, in that square shape in the middle of the table. I'd rather you do a rectangle or do something oblong. You can do a nice round tray or a big tray bowl. We just want something again that takes up a little bit more vertical space. If you want to do a really big, um, you know, uh, vase with some overflowing greenery, this is your opportunity to do so. You Spe need to add some tropical plants to the space, whether that be a bird of paradise or a palm. Those are the plants you want. Please don't get olive trees. That's just not going to work for your climate. I um, mean, it's just not going to flow right. Even if it's fake, it just isn't going to make as much space sense in your space. And if you're one for family photos, you have a huge opportunity for an amazing gallery wall right in 
that dining area right above that sideboard. Please put some family photos, put some buffet lamps on either side of that media console. We'll have some nice lighting at nighttime and it'll tell us more about your family. On the other side of that room, big paintings, massive paintings. Find an artist that really resonates with you and get some art up on those walls. Don't settle though. Don't just rush and get something. It needs to be big. You're looking at at least 45 by 60 and that's just by looking at it through a photo, but you're going to have to go bigger go home or this could be a really good opportunity for a fun family DIY project. And last but not least, if you need more lighting, don't be afraid to add side tables to your living area that are round or to add a really nice arc lamp over the back of the sofa that is closest to the um, backyard. It's okay to have lamps kind of in the middle of nowhere as long as you have a really good way to hide the cord or you have some type of battery operated light. You want things again that take up vertical space. Don't be afraid to do that. And throughout this video, also learn that it's okay to try things and they not look great. We do that all the time. Designers do that. That's what I do in my fancy software all the time. I'm like, does this look good? Does this look good? It's okay that it doesn't happen immediately for you. Just try out many, many different things. Last but not least, you can actually extend your living area if you want to. You can push that sofa back and even add more accent chairs because right now you have so much space in between that back sofa and the backyard that you're like, what do I do with this space? You already have a dining area, so make the living space larger. There is nothing wrong with that at all. Okay guys, that's it for design dilemma number three. I feel like we learned a lot of things from that space. I think we learned, hey, you know, sometimes we want to be minimal. Um, sometimes we want a really light color palette and that's good, but we also have to make sure that minimal isn't empty and that we adequately fill a space and make it feel homey. In that space, we want to get some color, we want to get more texture, and we want to just get more things on the floor and on those walls. Okay guys, that's it for today's YouTube video. I hope you had fun looking at these design dilemmas with me. In all of these spaces, we saw mistakes that we all commonly make, but we also learned that they're really, really easy fixes. Did you like today's YouTube video? If you did, let me know down in the comment. Would you like to see another episode of Design Dilemmas? If you do, the way to enter is to just send me some photos over on Instagram and interact with my other Design Dilemmas because I choose all of my people from people who have commented and interacted with my other posts. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.